Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are talking about sharing stresses in hollow circular members that are experiencing torsion. So we're going to use the same formula that we were using for, for solid circular members, which was uh, the shearing stress is equal to that internal torque times rho, which is our distance out from the very center of the axis, uh, out radially. And this is over J, the polar moment of inertia. Now the only thing that's changing is for for values of rho that are less than C1. So C1 here is our inner diameter and C2 here, or inner radius really. And C2 is our outer radius. So for values that are smaller than our inner radius, there'll just be no shear because there's no material there to be in shear. Um, and then we'll experience shear that increases linearly uh, from uh, from our, our, our radius here or value of rho of 15 millimeters out to 30 millimeters. And if you once you find the max shear, if you basically just uh, extended it back down to uh, to the the axis uh, and set that to zero, you'd have a linear growth just like we were having the solid circular shafts, um, just where the the minimum shear will be a non-zero value, but it'll be on that linear. Uh, linear scale basically of increasing shear with this increasing uh, distance from the axis. So to get started let's figure out what our polar moment of inertia is and our formula is uh, pi over 2 times c2 to the power of 4 minus c1 to the power of 4. So where we were dealing with solid circular rods, we were just setting C1 to be equal to zero and then going like that. But in this case, we actually have a value for C1. So now we have pi over two uh, times C2 to the power of four. So this is 0 0.03 meters to the power of four minus 0 0.015 meters to the power of four. And uh, when we crunch that, we basically just get this is equal to 1.193 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the power of 4. All right, so now we can go ahead and calculate our shear, our max shear. So let's do that one first. So for max shear, we're going to have uh, 1.5 kilonewtons, I'm oh, sorry, 1.5 kilo newton meters uh, that is our internal torque and then we have uh, 0 0.03 meters right because we know that our shear our max shear will occur at that max distance at c2 so we plug in c2 there and then we throw this all over j which was 1.193 times 10 to the minus 6 meters 4 and it turns out with these exact units, if you have kilonewton meters times meters times something times 10 to the negative 6 meters 4, well, if you just do 1.5 times 0 0.03 divided by 1.193, uh, we're going to get this number here, which is 0 0.0377. And this unit is in gigapascals. And we can convert that to megapascals by just multiplying it by 1,000 which is 37.7 megapascals. All right, now if you're not comfortable making the jump from these units to gigapascals or you can't remember why that works, uh, this is all the units and this is how we get to 0 0.0377 gigapascals. All right, so that was our expression for T max or our uh, equation for T max where we had T times C2 over J. Now to get our T min, we have uh, very similar, we just have T times C1 over J. So if we plug in these numbers again, we just get 1.5 kilonewton meters times C1, which is just 0 0.015 meters. And that's all over J, which was 1.193 times 10 to the negative 6 meters 4. And if we just do that equation using the same logic that we had here, we're going to find out that this is 0 0.0189 gigapascals. All right, and that is equal to uh, 18. 
0.9 megapascals. So this is the shear that we're basically feeling on the inner wall here, which happens to be our minimum shear. Now there is another way that we can calculate minimum shear. Maybe let's change the color. Uh, the, other, the other expression for minimum shear that we can write is uh, tau min is just equal to the ratio of C1 over C2 times the maximum shear. So in this case, we know the maximum shear. We know C1 and C2. So we have C1 is 0 0.015. C2 is 0 0.03. And uh, the shear, the max shear was 37.7 MPA. And uh, if you just run that, you're going to find out that we get 18.9 MPA, which is exactly the same. And what that shows that is, is that if C1 approached zero, then our minimum shear would approach zero. So we are getting that, uh, that linear decrease in shear as we go from the outer surface in towards the radius. And in a case of a hollow shaft like this, um, it'll reach its min shear, minimum shear when it hits that inner wall. But if that inner wall went all the way to the middle, then we'd have a solid circular shaft and then these formulas would still basically hold true. So these work for any circular hollow shaft uh, and it doesn't matter how big the cavity is in the inside.